Hello everyone and welcome to Days Before Christmas, a holiday themed 2D platformer and a lost let's play of sorts. We're going to go into the options and turn anti-time up to 30 seconds, that may not make a lot of sense but it will shortly during this exposition. Anyway, this is a lost let's play of sorts. This was actually the first video game I ever recorded and it was the first video game ever up on the channel. But uh, I quickly deleted it halfway through the Let's Play because I realized I was playing an inferior version of the game. I was Let's Playing the SNES version, which is far worse than the Genesis version, which is what we're playing here. I think the Days Before Christmas Let's Play is also the only Let's Play that's been deleted from the channel of By My Choice. Uh, there are a couple of other videos that are gone because of copyrighted content, like a, uh, I believe there was a quick video on Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue for the PS1. But that was a... that probably wasn't a great video anyway. I should redo that one sometime. Anyway, with the season, it seemed like a good time to revisit Days Before Christmas. I initially planned to do a full Let's Play to replace the one that never was finished, but... I realized that Days Before Christmas... I, would, I wouldn't say I outgrew Days Before Christmas, but the game design is no longer as appealing to me. It's not a terrible game by any means, and it's a lot more fair than other 2D platformers of the era, that's for sure. The idea behind the design in Days Before Christmas is fairly simple, and it's a design that was common practice at the time. The design basically boils down to, hey, don't be an idiot and run straight into obstacles that are right in front of you. The difference between Days Before Christmas and other games that use this design is that Days Before Christmas actually gives you enough time to see what's ahead. The SNES version does not, in case you were curious. In the Super Nintendo version, much like other platformers of the era, you're supposed to be constantly afraid of what might be ahead of you just off-screen where you can't see it. But in the Genesis version, you know you can actually see things that are coming at you before it's too late. Which is much appreciated. But it's a very simple design, and I certainly wouldn't have enough to say for the whole game. So instead of Let's Playing the entire game as was originally the intention, I'm just going to play through as many levels without getting hit as I feel like until I can't be asked to do it anymore. So this is anti-time. We've become anti-Santa, which, uh... The exposition at the beginning says a magic potion turns Santa into anti-Santa, but it's actually coffee. I'm not sure what they were going for there or if they were trying to be funny. It doesn't seem particularly witty to me. But when we're anti-Santa, we're invincible, which means we can just run through the stages with ease, unless we encounter a bottomless pit. And there are bottomless pits, though not nearly as many as you'd expect from a game like this, which is merciful. It seems that Days Before Christmas was specifically designed in mind with the idea not to bullshit the player and make them frustrated. So even someone like me, who has a personal dislike for old-school 2D platformers, can still play it. Because not only can I see what's in front of me clearly, and with enough time to react, there are far less leaps of faith, the hitboxes are all fairly generous, Santa has two methods of attack, both which are useful for incapacitating enemies in different respects. Feels like the game was made for the player instead of against them. Looking back, I'm not actually sure how I could stomach the Super Nintendo version long enough to play it. But that might have been back when I was a lot more lenient with games that, uh, that forced memorization upon the player. Not that memorization is inherently bad if your game is, say, a rhythm game, or emulating a rhythm game in some fashion, such as the modern Sonic titles, but... Days Before Christmas clearly is not trying to do that. But when you take away all the bullshit from a 2D platformer with design as simple as Days Before Christmas, what you have is, a. Uh, well, there's nothing bad here, really, but there's nothing too good. Which is why I couldn't Let's Play it. Fortunately, what I can do is talk about my experiences in early recording before I started the Playable Passion channel. Because there were actually a couple of times I tried my hand at recording games before this... Before this channel's existence, I mean. Uh, they were all uncommentated videos. I believe the very first thing I ever recorded was a, get this, was a hard mode walkthrough of Jimmy Neutron for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, I was way, way more lenient toward games back then. I had a very optimistic outlook on even the worst games. 
so uh, playing Jimmy Neutron on hard mode on the Game Boy Advance seemed like a fairly reasonable thing to do. I believe I even attempted to 100% it, and I got a decent amount to, into recording before I realized, what am I doing? This is a terrible idea, I don't even like this game. Other games I recorded would be Shrek Hassle in the Castle, which is still a good game. That one's still actually good. And there was Godzilla, the animated series for the Game Boy, which is one of the most dull video games I've ever played. It took like 70 minutes to do a single playthrough, and it's a good way to fall asleep. Uh, I actually uploaded a long play of the game, and the long play received over 300 views, but it's gone now. I deleted it along with my old channel. The old channel also had a few other Game Boy games, I suppose. But some of them are spoilers, because I'm going to record them for this channel eventually, hopefully. So I really don't want to mention those. Especially since I'm sure you don't know what they are. This boss battle isn't terribly thrilling, by the way, in case you were curious. It's not great. So after you fight a boss every five or six stages, you're rewarded with this weird flying minigame section where you have to drop presents into chimneys from above while steering around obstacles with your reindeer. Dropping presents into the chimneys is actually entirely optional and you're not penalized for missing a chimney. It's kind of humorous. The entire point of the game is to rescue all of Santa's presents before Christmas and deliver them on time. Yet there's no penalty for missing any of the chimneys. They really should stop making Finding Santa's Presence a core component to the narrative in these games. Because just as in Santa Claus in Trouble, actually finding the presence does not matter. You don't have to do it. So they should stop making that so important to the story. It just kind of breaks the whole story. And yeah, I guess I'm a little silly for expecting a better story from Days Before Christmas, but sue me. Narrative consistency is important, otherwise why would you have a narrative? Anyway, this is the last bit of, uh, last bit of the game I played because I got bored. But after this level, I'm going to show you a quick comparison between the SNES and Genesis versions in a screenshot. So that's the SNES version on the left and the Genesis version on the right, and as you can see, the SNES version has some problems. Uh, starting from the least important problem, the UI in the SNES version is hideous. The Genesis version's user interface and HUD is very stylized, it's also appropriately placed on the screen so it doesn't get in the way of any of the action. The SNES's HUD looks like something I could draw, which is not a compliment. The present in particular, the present icon in the corner looks disgusting, so they should be ashamed of themselves for using that user interface. It's a terrible HUD. Secondly, you may notice that the graphics in the Genesis version are simply far more detailed. The wood actually looks like wood in the Genesis version, and Santa's sprite is much better, much more clearly defined. And now let's get into some of the serious differences that make the SNES version kind of garbage. You may notice that on the SNES screenshot, there are only three Santa hats, which is our life counter. In the SNES version, Santa can only take three hits. In the Genesis version, he can take five, which is a lot more reasonable. Not only can Santa only take three hits in the SNES version, but I'm sure you've noticed by now that the SNES version also gives you less room to see. In the Genesis version, you simply have more room to see what's coming. But in the SNES version, unless you're terrified of everything, as was common practice during the time period, then you're prone to walk into enemies off cliffs and make a lot of blind jumps throughout the game, forcing you to memorize several sections thoroughly. It's a little bit frustrating. So, it would seem that we could say the SNES version is worse in every way, but it is superior in a single regard. The music you're listening to right now is from the SNES version, and it carries a much more cheerful holiday theme than the Genesis counterpart. Even the music that is meant to sound more ominous sounds far more ominous on the SNES version. But the SNES version having superior music is not enough reason to recommend it. 
it's really bad. The Genesis version is far more, far more well designed, far better for general player consumption. Please don't play the SNES version if you ever play this game. But that's about all I have to say about Days Before Christmas. It's very average, nothing too wrong with it. It's a lot more fair than many other platformers of the era, so it gets extra points for that. I would love to say I have fond memories of it, as it is the first game I recorded for this channel, but I don't. I don't feel fondly for the game at all. It's just completely middle of the road. So there you go. 